Hello Average Engineers, today we have an interesting topic, one that will probably strike a chord with a bunch of data people and I'm going to title it Data Analysis is Hell. Now I've been in and around data analysis at least one kind or another in a professional capacity since about 2014, so that's quite a while. And I've worked in anything from tiny little startups to family-owned companies to giant corporations and it's pretty much this has been the same everywhere, it's that data analysis is hell. I have my theories as to why this is a case, and I think we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go through and talk about them, about why data analysis hell. And basically, as your complexity and the scale of analysis you do increases, you enter further and further into Dante's nine rings of hell. Now, I'm just gonna start by listing some things, and we'll just talk about each of them for a little bit, uh, but I'm just gonna state some assumptions that I start. When I'm talking about analytics, I'm talking broad strokes, but I'm generally talking about the following task and people. I'm talking about data analysts, data scientists, any sort of report developer, or dashboard developers, kind of anything in that analytics space. And the target audience is usually end users and the business, and usually the end result, you're using stuff out of a data lake, data warehouse, lake house platform. Now I'm just gonna go into a giant list of why data analysis is hell, and I think you'll learn something from it. Number one, most data quality is simply poor, which makes the job impossible. There's a lot of poor data modeling out there, which makes, again, the job even harder. Poor data quality, poor data modeling. Also, the business rarely communicates their needs or requirements well, which can, which can make things just hard to figure out and everybody to get aligned. And, of course, every business has special needs that increase complexity that they forget to tell you about. And analytics, generally, they're always these projects are always under scope. They're always under scope in terms of time and complexity, pretty much are off the board. And also, analytic systems are typically less developer, best practice driven. What do I mean by that? Again, data analysts, report developers, etc. They're typically not from a software engineering background. Therefore, when it comes to these systems that they're being used and worked on, they usually start to fall apart a little bit. Basically, most people in analytics, they operate very close to the core business, whether it's marketing, product, et cetera, accounting, whoever, finance, they work close to the business and that comes with a certain amount of chaos that cannot be avoided. And also one-off and priority requests that come out of normal, nowhere are normal operating procedure in analytics and analysis. It's basically on a daily basis, there's things that pop up that are on fire most likely. And of course, it's always hard to get people to agree on anything, including analytics, say like the definition of a simple, you know, sum this. It's usually not that simple. Data analysis and analytics is always hell. And I've, again, I've worked up and down the data analysis myself. I've been a business intelligence engineer. I've been a report developer before I moved into data engineering, and it's been the same everywhere, no matter the size of the company. I'm gonna see if we can come up with a few approaches that might be able to make the life of the analytics and analysis people a little bit less burdensome, a little bit less chaotic. And I think like most things in life, including analytics, we should try to reduce any sort of chaos that is inserting itself into the process. So reducing chaos means life will be better and analytics and analysis will be less hell. I'm gonna simply go back through what we just talked about with those bullet points. I'm just gonna give suggestions high level on how to fix and reduce the chaos. Remember we talked about most data quality is simply poor. This is probably the most easily addressed problem that plagues many data platforms. It's causing nightmares for downstream consumers including analytics. You simply need to look into data quality tools like Soda, Great Expectations, etc. Databricks has their own tools. Pretty much there are open source data quality tools and you simply need to start putting in place at least some basic data quality checks that will help issues from screwing up analytics downstream. Poor data modeling is always a problem. Lack of forethought and insight to how the data will be consumed downstream. This is very simple to fix as well. This is a human problem. If you're willing to simply spend some time on your data platforms to do some redesign and refactor and put time into the data modeling up front, it's going to reduce the problems downstream in analytics. Of course, the businesses don't communicate needs or requirements well. This has been around. This has always been the case. This will always be the case. You basically have to learn to do a few things better to help alleviate these issues because they're not going to go away. You have to have more requirements meetings across the boards. You have to have regular progress check-ins and reviews on analytics projects that you're working on to realign and get alignment. And you have to be able to work on cross-team communication, basically close check-ins, more meetings, 
Again, you can't just go off in a corner and build some report, some dashboard, and come back. You're probably going to have to redo it all. It's probably going to be all wrong now. What they're expecting, communication is key, increased communication. Every business has special needs that increase complexity. Again, this is just part of life. You're not going to stop this problem. You're not going to solve it. Just don't pretend like this stuff is easy when you're planning the project when it's not easy. Don't say that it's going to take me a day or two when it's going to take a week. And don't say, oh, yeah, no problem. I can do that when you really don't know that's the case. You just need to be better about estimating the project complexity and that's closely related above remember we talked about analytics tasks and projects are always under scopes in terms of times and complexity just you know if a task involves analytics just add a few days or weeks to it that's just the reality another interesting one is analytics systems are typically less best practice driven when it comes to developing things this is 90 percent of the case most of the time many of the folks are working in around in and around analytics simply don't come from the classic software engineering background this is going to lead to problems, but you can solve these problems. You can teach things to people. You can make them write clean code. You can teach them good development life cycle practices. You can make them use Git. These are basically issues where people don't want to learn or they don't want to train people to learn how to do software development better. And I'm not saying every analytics person needs to be a software engineer, but there is stuff they can learn to do better and processes they can do better and if they're not willing to do that then it's always going to be chaos another important one is operating close to the business comes with a certain amount of chaos you can't escape this you can only mitigate it by planning ahead and being firm you need to have more meetings you need to request clarity more often you need to request documentation or tickets for work you need to learn emotional intelligence learn to be kind but firm with the business closely related to that are the one-off priority requests out of nowhere for normal operating procedures this will always be the case when you're working with a business but again be firm be kind request people follow due process ask for tickets if you're working like a JIRA kind of style bring up these problems in team meetings if they're occurring if if you teach the business that you won't simply drop everything every single time they have a question without some sort of process and chase and the chaos will never end you simply have to put your foot down every once in a while lastly it's hard to get a bunch of people to agree on anything especially maybe like what a data point means and this is just learning about bringing people together in the same place be able to make hard decisions, trade-offs, communicate well, meet in the middle. This is a soft skill. It's about learning soft skills and communicating. If you want to make data analysis and data analytics less hell, you basically have to control the controllables. And there are plenty of them that you can get your hand around, so it'll at least bring a semblance of balance and reduce the chaos you might be experiencing. We can boil it down to probably three or four bullet points. You need to enforce software engineering best practices in the analytics context force people to learn how to do things correctly secondly you need to increase communication and expectations around processes stick to the process increase communication thirdly be realistic when it comes to planning and estimating these complicated projects analytics and analysis is always complicated make sure you estimate it correctly and plan correctly for that complexity. Fourthly, you just need to have people learn to upskill themselves both in the area of soft skills, communication, documentation, etc., and technical skills. Have people willing to learn and grow and do their job better. Data analysis and analytics has always been hell and probably will always be hell, but you know if you just try to bring a little chaos to the things you can control, it will definitely make your life easier.